Hello and welcome. We are talking about some of these uh, statements involving sets and their operations and relationships and we're trying to determine if each of these statements is true or false. So we're dealing with these two sets here A and B and I want to just go through and talk about each of these statements and talk about definitions and, and properties that we'll need for both for each. So the first statement that I see is that X is a subset of B. So let's go ahead and talk about this statement here. So first we need to know what the set B is. B is the set containing X and the set containing X. So in B lives two elements. X is an element of B and the set containing X is an element of B. So for sure I know it's true that X is an element of B, but is X a subset of B? Um, that's kind of a weird question here. Um, and, and actually I don't even really need to know what B is to know that this probably isn't true. The issue here is that X, this is an element. And it's clear with the definition of B that it's an element and not a set. Generally, sets are going to be denoted with capital letters. It's not a hard rule, but a lot of the times, you know, when, when you're introducing a set, you're going to use a capital letter for uh, the, the label of that set. And, um, and it's clear with the definition of B that X is an element and not a set. So just under the condition that X is an element, not a set, I know that X alone cannot be a subset of B. Okay, let's make sure we know what a subset is. Let me give you a definition here to make sure that you understand. So a subset, let me, let me use a definition, give you a definition here to help you understand what a subset is. So let's say I've got let um, M and N be two sets in the same universal set. I'm going to use some logical notation here to define M as a subset of N. Okay, if M is a subset of N, then for all uh, elements X in our universal set, if X is an element of M, then X must be an element of N. Okay, so just using this um, definition here of subsets, there's no way to evaluate um, the elements in the set X, right? Because to determine if it's a subset, I'd have to look at all my elements of M and make sure that they're also in N. But since we look at X, it's not a set, so it doesn't have any elements. It is an element of itself, or it is an element itself, but it's not a set, so we can't check its elements. Um, so don't think too hard. I think the take home here is X alone is not a set, it's just an element. So then I know that this first statement is false. Okay, so let's look at the next problem. The next problem talks about um, power sets. So we want to understand the power set of a set. We're trying to determine if the empty set is an element of the power set of B. Okay, and actually this is always going to be true for any set that we consider. The empty set is always going to be an element of the power set. Okay, let's go ahead and understand, make sure that we understand what a power set of, of an, a set is, okay? So the power set of B is a set containing all subsets, all possible subsets of B. So let's look at B and see if we can figure out what this power set of that uh, set B is. So B contains X and the set containing X. 
So you want to go ahead and just consider each element, and for each element in your set, when we're trying to describe a subset, we'll either choose to place that element in the set or not. So for each element, we have two choices. So if we have two choices for x, two choices for the set containing x, that gives us four elements in our power set in, in total. So the first subset that we can consider is, let's suppose we choose not to include either element. If that's true, then we have the empty set. Okay. Then let's suppose we just try to include x. That's one possible subset. Let's suppose we try to include the set containing x. Okay, that's another subset. The set containing the set containing x. Okay. Or we could include b itself because the set itself is always a subset of itself. Okay. So there's our four possible subsets of b. So we could either have the case where neither element is included, one element is included, or both elements are, conclude, are included. So if you notice here, the cardinality or the number of elements in the power set of B is two, or four, blah, four. And, and this is true for any set. If you take the number of elements in your set, so the number of elements in B is two, the power set is always going to have two to the power of however what the what the cardinality of of the set is. So, um, for let me make a little note here, for any set A, well let's call it, let's call it M, um, the cardinality of the power set M is equal to um, two to the power of the cardinality of m. Okay? So that's why I knew that there must be four elements in the power set of b. And we're going to actually see that in our counting unit, why that's true. Um, if you're familiar with the multiplication principle, then you can probably figure out why we would count it this way. So, so the second one is true. If I look at the power set of b, I look at the elements, I've got the empty set as an element, the set containing x as an element, the set containing the set containing x as an element, and the set itself as an element. So because I've listed the empty set as an element of my power set, I know that it's true that the empty set is an element of the power set of B. And this is going to be true for any set, that the empty set will be a element in the power set. So let's look at the next one. The next one involves subsets and set subtraction. So so let's start, because we've been talking about subsets a little bit, let's tar, start and make sure that we understand set subtraction. What happens is you just remove any overlapping elements. Um, so you're going to take from A anything that's in B. So if we think about A, we've got the elements x, y. And if we think about B, we've got the elements x and the set containing x. So if we remove from A what's in B, the only overlapping thing here is x. So what we're going to have left is the set containing y because it's going to remove that x. So let's draw a Venn diagram here to help us understand what's going on here with set subtraction. So we've got the same universal set where A and B live. So here's A, here's B. Um, so in both, in the intersection here, in this little one, lives the element x, and then y is also an A, and then B also contains the set containing x. So um, if we want to try to kind of shade this and see what's going on here, um, you'll see if we take A and then remove the part where there's B, see how we just get that region there? Um, so that's how we get the set containing Y for that set subtraction. Okay. Um, so this problem says, is the set containing X 
uh, since we know what that set subtraction results in, is the set containing x a subset of the set containing y? Well, I know this is not true, but let's just um, let's just use that lad logical definition of subsets to try to help us understand um, why this is not true. So I know this is false, but let's try to understand a little bit better. So this uh, this means uh, logically, if we pick any element, I'm going to call it M as to not get confused with X here. If we pick any element in the set containing X, it also has to be in the set containing Y. Okay, so remember with an implication and uh, for all, for every quantifier, the way to disprove this would to be find a case where my hypothesis is true but my conclusion is false. So I know that X is an element of the set containing X, so this is a true statement. And if I'm choosing X, X is not an element of Y. So X element of Y is a false statement. So we've found a variable X that shows that this statement is true. And the logical way is not necessarily the easiest way. I think you can kind of see like, okay, um, X is here, but not here. So then it can't be a subset. Um, but the logical definition will help us in proofs and um, understanding these set properties for general sets instead of specific sets in this case. So. Hopefully that makes sense that the set containing X is not contained in the set containing Y. Okay. If I had the set containing X, so this is a true statement, the set containing X is contained in the set containing XY, right? Because if I pick an element here, the only one to pick is X, right? Well, it's in here too, no matter what I say, right? So this is true. All right, let's do the last one here. And actually, we kind of already touched on this, so it shouldn't take too much time. Um, this is asking about the power set of A. So remember, the power set just contains all possible subsets. So uh, let's see, our first option, so we've got A containing the elements X and Y. Our first option, maybe we don't include either of those elements, so that would be the set, um, the empty set, okay? Maybe we just include one, so we'd have the set containing X the set containing Y, or maybe we'd include both elements, okay? So we've got one, two, three, four elements. That tells us that the power set of A, the cardinality, right, the number of elements in that set is four. And like we mentioned before, if we're trying to figure out the cardinality of the power set of any set, we're going to take 2 and raise it to the cardinality of the set that we're working on. So in this case, our cardinality of A, A has two elements, X and Y, so 2. So 2 to the second power is 4. So this is true. The size of the power set of A is 4. So hopefully that helps a little bit with some of this notation. If you have questions or need additional clarification, just let me know. I'm happy to send you some help. Talk soon.